in your comments down here as well as an email I've got lots and lots of questions about neutrals one typical is I really want to see how to neutralize my colors or and when or where it's needed in my paintings well, I'm going to put you to work on this one Now I could give you demonstrations all day long and you still might not know how to neutralize colors. So I'm going to suggest an exercise for you. Uh, what I suggest is that you set up two lines of color on your palette uh, that move in the direction of the color wheel. Now I have here a color wheel. In the center we have the most saturated colors. That means none of them are neutralized. That means they're absolutely pure saturated hues and that's the opposite of neutral and then I've developed this color wheel so that as these outer circles get progressively more neutral because they've had their complements added to them and you can get a color wheel similar to this actually you can get one that has I think six degrees of neutrality if you go to the, our website dianemice.com uh, click in the menu on free stuff and you'll find there um, that this particular or a, a, a version of this a new, um, the, for degrees of intensity color wheel. I'll get it out in a minute. All right, but here's, here's the exercise I want you to do to show you about making neutrals. You see, I've done here, I've created two color, or you might call them hue lines, uh, two color uh, lines of hue. This one starting as if the color wheel's here, going from green and then going on through a blue green to blue to a, a blue and then on to blue violet and then uh, on to red violet. Uh, these need to be colors that are uh, that come out of the tube but not neutral. You have a number of colors in your tubes that are not neutral. And so uh, in the other side of course then would be here um, the red uh, and, and I'm starting out with the, the alizarin crimson. I didn't name these pigments here because they'll vary according to what you have in your tubes. But I have here the a red and then the red as it goes into a red orange and then on to orange and it comes down into the uh, yellow orange and then on to yellow. That is the 12 degree or 12 hue traditional color wheel that's in my experience is the easiest one to work with when you're trying to study color. Alright, now here's the deal, and you've, you've heard me tell you this before. To find the neutral, which is what this, um, this person asked about, to, to find the neutral, you mix complements together. But here's the deal. Complements, as they, our colors as they come out of the tube, might not be an exact complement. So if you will put a line of, uh, of the colors on your palette, such as I have here, you can play around with that and see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's start here then with yellow and violet. Now, according to the color wheel, violet and yellow are opposite, therefore they should neutralize each other. So if I pull a little bit of, of yellow, well, let's see, I'll just pull it right over here. I'm, I should put, no, I'm going to just pull it right over here. Now, yellow sometimes will lean towards orange as it comes out of the tube, depending on which yellow you have or it might lean a little bit towards green as it comes out of the tube depending so if you're not quite sure about that you will find out when you begin to do your little exercise that I'm assigning you here so purple alright the purple is right about here so I put this purple beside the yellow right there now let's try mixing them together and see what we get so if I pull the yellow into the purple like this what's happening here. They are indeed neutralizing each other. Now, neutralizing means that some of the complement is in it. The degree to which it's neutralized will vary. So, uh, it may be slightly neutral, or it may be very neutral, or it may be so neutral that you can't read the color. You see what's happening here? It's turning more brown than it is gray. You can tell that because I have a gray 
palette here and you would say to me but you told me that purple and yellow are going to neutralize each other and now it, I, it just turns brown so what do I do well the reason it turned brown it tells me that one of those colors has more red in it because if it were a true complement it would turn gray now I'm going to assume that I reached into an area here that had more red I'm going to pull a, a pull a little bit more blue in let's just pull this blue just go up just a little bit more uh, as if you were on the collar wheel just move in a different direction and in this case I'm going to add just a little bit more of the blue in and let's see if by adding let's just add it in right here see if by adding that blue in look what happens then it begins to go more towards gray and just a little bit more so that yellow is a little bit strong there and we can see there we have more or less a gray and and we can control the value of that of course by adding the white in. So if I put the white in, let's well, see it begins, it's still a little bit still needs a little bit more just a little bit, how about if we would just a little bit more right here there we go there it is right there so you see if it comes just because it, uh, the, but just because the tube is labeled a purple, for example, a, a, a dioxazine purple, and just because a tube is labeled a yellow, cadmium yellow, hansa yellow, whatever, doesn't mean that it's an exact registration of that hue, as it appears on the color wheel. So you would need to adjust one way or the other. If you want an exact neutral, you would need to adjust one way or another by moving uh, moving in another direction. And if you're not quite sure in which direction to move, play with it. Just go in one direction, like like I did here. I went more towards blue because I felt that had uh, that was not quite. It had a little bit too much red in it, so I went a little bit more towards blue, and I got the neutral. All right, now I'm going to do one more and just show you uh, that it works that way pretty much every time. So this time I'm going to go for the red, and I'll just go right up in here for the uh, um, alizarin crimson. Let's just get pure alizarin crimson. Alizarin crimson bites. No, it's got some. All right, that's okay. That's alizarin crimson with just a little bit of the uh, cadmium orange mixed in with it right here. All right, now if I pull the... I'll go into the green, and this green I formed with um, phthalo blue and yellow. So we'll mix those two together and let's see what happens. Remember, they are neutralizing each other even if they don't turn exact, uh, uh, absolutely gray. So you see, it's, it's a little dark to see. Uh, uh, the darker colors are really more difficult to see. But what do we see here happening there? We see that it still has, uh, feels a little bit red. Let's put uh, let's get some white over here. We're going to add white in. Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. That one you can see. Those two. Mm hmm. Those two do ne neutralize each other quite well. So, um, now, now the, quest the other question the person asked was. How do I use these in my paintings? Or why should I use these in my paintings? The neutrals, oh, well, let me say this another way. If all the colors in your painting are fully saturated, it's going to create chaos. There will be no color harmony there because the neutrals end up uh, giving us more harmony. Now the reason for that, uh, if you look at this scientifically, when if, if you have the colors that are totally opposite each other a pure red and a pure green when you pull those together green has yellow plus blue yellow blue red includes all the colors therefore it will give color harmony whenever you have colors in your painting that have other colors in them even to a very small degree it enables color harmony in your paintings now if you will observe in nature I have a few photographs here I'm going to show you if you observe in nature you'll see lots and lots of neutrals in nature too one of the one of the colors that is often um, misused in painting is green and that's because people will often see green as just green and they won't see all the neutrals in it but if you will 
switch your attention and look just for color, you'll see there are quite a few neutrals right here just in this green grass. And you'll see the same thing in foliage. And then also, if you, well you might say if you were looking at something like this rooster, that might seem very vibrant, but in reality most of the colors in this rooster are, uh, are subdued colors or more neutralized colors. Look at this. If you look at the reds on the color wheel, let's see if I can get this so that you might be able to see that. Just bend it over like this. If you look at the, on the red side of the color wheel, you'll see that you can go right up in here, right up in there, right here, right over in there, another about a second or a second and third degree of of the neutralized hue give us the, give us them those colors we find there. And one more example. <coughs> Here you might think that you see really, really highly saturated colors. But if you're looking at that in nature, you don't really see them that saturated. This is sort of Photoshop. Nevertheless, when you look closer at those colors in shadow, these yellows in shadow, for example, you see these more neutral lines. So the reason for using neutrals, one thing, one way, is when you're looking for, oh, oh well, let's say it this way, when you're doing realistic painting, um, you will find lots and lots of neutral in nature. It's part of what harmonizes nature. If you're doing abstract painting, uh, the neutral is going to enable color harmony. So you, you'll be using various degrees of neutral, but if you just experiment with putting just a little bit of complement in every color you use, you'll find that you get a more of a harmonious um, overall painting saving those saturated hues for just little accents here and there. And there's your quick tip. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.